Suzanne St. John Crane is a multi-talented woman. She's a, a singer, an actress, a film a producer, and she's here. Aww. So uh, welcome to the set. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Great Suzanne. to be here. Thank you. Thanks for, for coming. Me, yeah. You've got a new uh, movie coming out, premiering yes. this week, don't you? Yes, I do, called Sister Nancy. Sister Nancy. And who does that refer to? It refers to my mom, who was a nun when she was 17. I've actually been working on the film for 10 years. Really? And, um, yeah. yeah. I remember when you used to work here years <laughs> yeah. ago, uh, yeah. talking about it, and yeah. you saying that you were going to start working on it, and here it, here it finally is. Oh, gosh, it's been a, it's been a um, labor of love. I was trying to get the film labored and birthed before this one comes yeah. next month, so yeah. I think I'm going to get under the wire. I actually did it as a film in San Francisco, or excuse me, as a play, a one-woman show in San Francisco 10 years ago. Um, and uh, got really good reviews, and I thought, this is great, but now nah, I, want, I want this on film. I want it like an actual movie movie, and was kind of a fan of um, Spalding Gray, who's a real storyteller, and, and kind of straight-to-the-camera storyteller style, and that's what most of this film is. So, huh. so it's, it's, um, it's you performing, is that correct? It's, it's me, and it's, all, it's, it's a lot of things, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> it's me performing, it's also a film or a video, a cheap old VHS tape that I made of my mother, when I was at San Francisco State in 1991, 92, of her telling the story of how she was a nun, huh. and then she was actually tricked into leaving the convent by her mother and felt like she missed her calling because she w had to listen to her parents. Hmm. And uh, I had just found this out when I was 20. I didn't know my whole life. I didn't know my mom was a nun, and it was like, Duh, you know, the light bulb went on. How did, you find, how did she finally decide to tell she you? Find, I don't, she was ready, you know, and she, I, I think, you know, we were sitting in the kitchen one night, and she goes, you know, there's a part of my life I've never shared with you, and I'm thinking, okay. And she says, yeah, I was, I was in the convent, and that's what I always wanted to do. And the story she tells in this tape that I made of her, just beautiful, you know, how she used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning when she was in, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade, and take the bus in Niagara Falls out to church and not eat and fast and the whole thing. Every day she would do this. Wow. She was, this was her destiny. Were her parents in the religion? They were, but as in, I, that's one of the first questions I asked her on tape. You hear me behind going, well, wouldn't she want you to be a nun? Yeah. I mean, wasn't this a good thing? And she goes, oh, no. She thought it was weird. And I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> so my grandmother thought, no, you're supposed to get married and have kids and this is what you do and essentially tricked her into leaving and then once my mom left um, under this preconceived notion that my grandmother was very sick my grandmother said no, I'm not sick you're just not going back there this is what you're gonna do you were gonna go to get a job you're gonna get married and uh -huh. that there began my mom's life and so kind of the, qu the quandary for me that I kind of go through in this film is boy if my mom would have followed her dream and done what she wanted to do I wouldn't be here mm -hmm. so what does that do to me you know? yeah, <laughs> how, what, how do I need to live my life what an interesting that? thought so, yeah. yeah that's that's part of the story huh uh, so uh, so you wonder what her parents would have react how they would have reacted had she had the opposite yeah. desire what if she wanted to chuck religion all the way I know, you know and, yeah. and go with some other direction would they have said well, no, but um, still get married and have a kid, but also go to church on Sunday. I mean, my grandmother's a very intimidating four foot two Polish woman. You just didn't mess with her. So mm. I don't know. It just, <laughs> you're going to do this? And it, huh. yeah, the, the irony is she ended up, my, my grandmother made her get a job at Hooker Chemical Lab in Niagara Falls. I just love that twist. That's beautiful. You can't write that, but you know. <laughs> and that's where she met my father, and that was it. So. Great. And then there you are. Do you have siblings? Yes. Yeah. Older sister. Yeah. So she went on and had a couple of kids. Yeah. So yeah. what was her take on the whole thing when she told you the story? Did she tell it with a sense of regret, or did she? Had she reconciled the whole thing? You know, one of the lines I use in the in the movie actually is that that making that tape it was for it was a college project. It was can you tell a story for ten minutes and then part of my assignment in school was to reenact it. Well, she ended up talking for like fifty minutes and it was wow. laughter, tears. I mean, she cries, you know, very candidly, openly, and tells these stories. And I think that, um, yeah, there was a lot of regret. It was for the first time in her life she was coming to terms with the fact that this was stolen from her. I mean, she never talked about it. Hmm. So it was a very emotional but amazing and beautiful, you know, um, moment. And, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm so grateful I have that tape. That's really, really And so you neat. decided to take that and uh, first make it a play and now a movie. Yeah, huh. yeah. And so. what was that process like? So did you write, you went ahead and wrote some sort of a... A fictional counterpart to it? Or? Well, no, it's all real. It's, all it's real. very, it's very real. <laughs> Actually, there's several parts to it. I mean, there's that video. Then there's after my mom told me that, her life went on to be very, um, 
you know, she had a lot of trials and tribulations in her life after that. You know, she got divorced from my father. She ended up becoming a prescription drug addict, mm. lost her home, was homeless for a while, um, ended up getting cancer. I mean, just the, the, the saga kind of went on. Mm. And so the rest of the movie is uh, my relationship with her. So she talks about her relationship with her mother, and then I talk about, like, my relationship with her and um, some of the stuff that we went through. And so you've got... I actually shot above this studio one weekend 17 monologues that I had written about our lives together. And mm -hmm. um, that was shot in April of 02, I think, or 01, April of 2001. Mm -hmm. And so that's the other element is that you alternate these monologues. Um, and then we've also got some reenactments in there. As I'm telling stories, you, you see these things happening. Home movies, still photos. I mean, it's, there's so much in there. It's, and you, and you did reenactments at the true locations, is that correct? Yeah, I tried to as much as possible. That was real important to me um, for many reasons. But, you know, when we do, we do a reenactment of this homeless shelter, which you think would be a very depressing scene, it was hysterical. I mean, the people that lived there were just mm. such characters. There was one guy who, um, uh, actually Steve Capasso, who's kind of known in, this area, in Santa Cruz, he played... Um, Eddie the gangster. There was a guy who lived at the homeless shelter. There was Ike and Tina Turner's limo driver. And he would just sit around and tell these stories all day. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Wow. You know, there was a guy who, um, who uh, was from the Philippines who came over to get medicine because the, 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 or had surgery at Stanford because the medicine he was given in the Philippines for migraines made him blind. So here he is. He's blind in this homeless shelter and he's afraid of water. So he won't, he'll go stand in the shower without the water on. And I mean, just bizarre. You can't make this up. So we did this whole montage of like the homeless shelter scene, um, you know, and we were able to shoot at the shelter, which was really neat for now, me. Now, was that in the area? Was your mom from this area? Uh, San Mateo. San Mateo. Yeah. 